Mr. Feeling. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man. 923 Bug. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvat. Call the bug man today. 923 Bugs. Exiles from what you ask? Exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Profita. He's Kevin Gallagher. And they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. They said I could find you here. Why are you fishing? Our company's got to ship out two full color brochures and 20 color copies. You're killing me. It's done. Designed, printed, packaged, and shipped. How? You just got to know the right people. Baker Printing, the printing people. How come you get to fish in this private lake? Like I said, you just got to know the right people. You can know the right people too. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I call Tax Solutions now and a great big weight right was lifted off my shoulder. Solutions Now, and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine you yeah. know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from yeah. 6 to 9. Happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6. And brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2. As well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, dining will change forever. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We've put the band back together, South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and food and andouille 
Bakery Sausage. One, one, one. Beats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Fantastic. Man to find meats. That's the Taste best the fresh kind of local flavor Sounds in like everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. Your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. We've gotten all of the, pardon the pun, bugs worked out of the system. Uh, microphones, sometimes they do their own thing, but uh, we've got all of that straightened out now, so we are ready to rock and roll. Uh, you guys and girls that have listened to me for any amount of time, be it on radio, television, or both, you know how big I am on taking part in the process of voting. Uh, I am one of those that, since day one, has harped unceasingly on the fact that if you don't vote, you have no right to complain. Uh, as, a, as an American of color who happens to be a conservative, I am particularly distressed when people don't vote. So every time I run across organizations, projects, things of that nature where people are encouraged to not only take part in the process, but be a part of engaging others to take part in the process, I immediately reach out. Got a phone call, clear out of the blue, not so very long ago from a very dear friend that um, asked me if I would be a block captain as part of a, a project that's going on. And, and I told this dear friend of mine, man, I've got so much on my plate right now with COVID, with hurricane coverage, uh, with all the other things going on. I can't really commit to doing that. But I tell you what I can do. I'll commit to having this project and a representative thereof on the show so that we can tell as many people as possible and hopefully get as many people as possible involved in making an informed decision. So enter Kalita Lloyd, founder and reconciler with Mission Reconcile. Kalita, good morning and how are you today? I am well. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for just that wonderful framing because that is exactly what it is. So good. Good morning to you. Fantastic. So why the need for this precinct organizing project? So the precinct organizing project is needed for exactly the reason that you shared, which is it is an opportunity to engage our neighbors in mm -hmm. voting, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and engage our community in this bedrock of our democracy, which is voting and civic engagement. And so the precinct organizing process, neighbors organizing their neighbors to increase voter turnout. And it's very much needed, not just in this upcoming election in November, but the elections in mm -hmm. And So this is something that we want to build long-term, to have a long-term impact on how we get um, our communities as voters and engage uh, to increase voter turnout all across the state of Louisiana. So who is eligible to take part in this vital, vitally important project, Kalita? Everybody. <laughs> and, so, and I say everybody because it is something that everyone can do. What I've always said is that voting, you can do. And so it does take a special person to encourage others, right, and to lead others. And so what we have said that voters who are um, block captains and who sign up to be block captains to encourage other people to get out and vote within their neighborhood, mm -hmm. they're passionate about voting. They know the importance of voting. They understand what voting um, means and what it can do. And so they are passionate about voting. 
Uh, they want to engage their neighbors in building power and building organized voting. And they want to make sure that they're doing their part in executing um, our civic duty of voting. And so that's everybody. Mm -hmm. So let's get down to the brass tacks of this. What's required of the block captains, Kalita? Yes, and so it's a simple task that we're asking folks. We're saying we're going to provide you, together Louisiana, we're going to provide you with 10 names, 10 households, um, a call list, and you are responsible for those 10 households getting out to vote. And so that means you're going to be contacting them phone. In the world of COVID, we are not encouraging people to be in person, but we are allowing you to take your preference. These are people in your neighborhood. And so we believe organically connections will be made. Um, and so we're encouraging people to um, call on the phone um, and connecting with voters and their 10 lists. And they're responsible for making sure that they get out to vote. Um, for every election, specifically this upcoming election in November. So do they need any special skills or, or does your project equip them with materials, training, anything of that nature? Yes, definitely. So what we do is once people sign up to be block captains, we provide them with training with how we're going to be engaging with voters. Mm -hmm. And so that is a world of technology, but we're able to um, give them information. And even if they don't have a smartphone or access to a computer, we are gonna figure out a way how they can get engaged. And so I don't want people to feel limited by not being able to access the internet or access um, smartphones. If you are a person who wants to engage other people in voting and getting out the vote, you can participate in this. So we provide training and we provide the call list and all the resources. We'll give you a script um, that you can make your own in order to do this work. And so we're excited. Um, this nonpartisan effort is an opportunity to get um, neighbors to organize their neighbors. Um, ultimately to increase voter turnout. That was going to be the next question. Is this project affiliated with any political candidate or political party? No, right? So that's what, um, what, that's what we feel is the bedrock of this work is that it's nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to connect with our neighbors, our friends, our family, our community in a way that encourages those to vote and increase the voter turnout. And so that, um, that allows people to engage with one another. It is not connected to a candidate, not connected to a political party, but strategically we are engaging with our neighbors in order to increase voter turnout all across the state of Louisiana in a nonpartisan fashion. When I look at your press photo, uh, if it is anywhere near recent, uh, it tells me that there is an age differential between the two of us. You are a relatively young person. I'm a relatively older person. Many young people these days uh, don't believe in the process, feel disengaged, disenchanted by the process. As a young person, what would you say to other young people about how important it is that you get involved and make the most informed decision that you can, Kalita? Yeah, um, and so I'm gonna represent my generation. I'm gonna push back a little bit and say that we are engaged, right? We are one engaged. But I think we are in a generation where we want radical things, right? Mm -hmm. We're back into that space of we want to not only vote, but we want to see results of our vote, right? right? And so I think what we have to do is we have to encourage that our vote does matter and that our vote does hold power, particularly in a unified front. Mm -hmm. And that's what this crucial organizing project is all about, is how can we come together as neighbors and citizens in order to engage with one another in um, deep civic engagement and voter engagement. So I think this generation is encouraged to vote wholeheartedly. Um, if we then want to see the results of our vote. And so what I would encourage young people is that your vote does matter, uh, your vote does count, and your vote is very much needed 
uh, now more than ever. When I look back over my lifetime and, and my life experience, I found, Kalita, that once you get involved in the process, it grows on you. It, it becomes a habit. It becomes something you look forward to taking part in. Has that been your experience? And are you hoping, what are you hoping to carry over from all of this will be? Yes, um, it is um, addictive, if you will. Um, I am an attorney by profession, mm -hmm. and so I just think that is a, a drop in the, the bucket of what motivates me. But I think overall, when I'm able to see people come together as a community on a unified front to advocate for things to care about, mm -hmm. such as voting and advancing education on voter engagement and civic engagement, right. that gets excited and motivated because that helps us to look for the change that we want to see, look for the continued progress that we want to see, and even the things that are good, to keep maintaining those things. And so that is the motivation, and I think what encourages others as well. So how can people that are watching right now that have decided, you know what, it's time I get involved, it's time I help others become more engaged in the process. How do they find out more about this very worthwhile project, Kalita? Yes, definitely. So we want to encourage all of your viewers and listeners to go to togetherla.org mm -hmm. backslash block captain and sign up today to be a block captain. Um, we will have training, we have one today. Uh, we'll have training throughout the time period. But as long as you're saying, yes, I want to engage with 10 households in my neighborhood or in another community in order to increase voter turnout, uh -huh. I want to do that, then we encourage you to sign up. And so that's togetherla.org backslash block captain. And once you go to that website, you can sign up. We'll have you recorded. We'll be able to reach out to you and engage. And I look forward to meeting everyone who's interested and fired up about voter turnout all across the state of Virginia. Kalita Lloyd, founder and reconciler with Mission Reconcile, thank you so much for the time. And more important, Kalita, thank you for moving in a meaningful way to get more people here in the state that we both love so dearly involved in the process. I appreciate that more than I can say, Kalita. All right. Thank you so much. Um, we look forward to everyone connecting. Thank you so much for having me. And, and do me a big favor. Tell our mutual friend, Press Robinson, I send all my love. I sure will. I talked earlier this morning. So, well, on Zoom anyways, right? <laughs> right, right. So good. All right. Well, take care and stay safe. All right. You too. Bye. It is uh, refreshing to see young people uh, decide to not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. Uh, again, I was approached about being a block captain with, but as, as you can imagine, with everything that I've got on my plate these days with COVID, uh, hurricane recovery, coverage, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. Um, I decided that I didn't want to overburden myself, but at the same time, I could lend my platform to help in that regard as well. If the spirit moves you to do so, become a block captain. When you look at the voter turnout historically here in the state of Louisiana, you know we need it. And more than voter participation, we need people casting informed votes these days. So, Marty, are we ready to toss? All right, we'll go ahead and get this commercial break out of the way. Yep, still working. Still working. We'll be back with more of the midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show right after this. Stay close. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. 
In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Jaguar Nation, we need your help in masking up Louisiana. Masking up or slow the spread of COVID-19. During this time, we must continue to wear a mask. Wash your hands and practice social distancing. It's important that we continue to abide by the CDC's guidelines to stop the spread. Jaguar Nation, we challenge you to mask up. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUGS. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvant. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. They said I could find you here. Why are you fishing? Our company's got to ship out two full color brochures and 20 color copies. You're killing me. It's done. Designed, printed, packaged, and shipped. How? You just gotta know the right people. Baker Printing, the printing people. How come you get to fish in this private lake? Like I said, you just gotta know the right people. You can know the right people too. Welcome back to the midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show. I um, <laughs> made it a point in the last break in, in speaking uh, with Kalita to emphasize not just voting, but making the best and most informed decision possible. That obviously is something that the folks in San Francisco either have failed to heed, refuse to heed, or simply don't want to heed. How else do you explain the likes of Nancy Pelosi being afforded the privilege of walking the halls of Congress all these many years. Since, since the last time I had the opportunity to share some time with you very gracious folks at home, she came out and said that, oh, I was set up by the hair salon, saying that, quote, as it turns up, as it turns out, it was a setup. So I take responsibility for falling for a setup. <laughs> you take responsibility for falling for a setup. Hmm. Disingenuous at best, stupid at worst. When, and, and this should tell us everything we need to know. When you represent a congressional district and don't apparently know the rules, the regulations, the COVID-19 protocols for what is arguably 
the most impactful event in modern day history in this country that pretty much tells you everything you need to know. If she is not aware of the rules and the regulations, then who would be? But yet, I would, God, I hope I'm wrong, venture a guess that she will be re-elected to once again freely roam the once hallowed halls of Congress. Speaking of COVID-19, it is my sincere hope that President Donald J. Trump will launch an immediate and thorough investigation into the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and how quietly it was announced that we now find out only 6% of folks listed as dying from COVID-19 died from that and that alone. 94% of the approaching 200,000 people attributed to death by COVID-19 had, according to the CDC, 2.6 other comorbidity factors, meaning diabetes, heart disease, respiratory issues, uh, you name it, all sorts of other things. And we have been led to believe that all of these folks died from COVID-19 and COVID-19 alone. Yeah, right. <laughs> Marty, Marty is just off camera going, shh, shh. We're not, we're, not, we're not supposed to know that. Uh-uh, no, nah, bro, no. No, 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 bro, we ain't supposed to know that. I think it was Shakespeare that coined that infamous phrase, something's rotten in Denmark. You smell it? <laughs> you smell it? Uh-huh. Fear-mongering is a powerful tool. And if ever you wondered the validity of that statement, all you have to do is look around. Bottom of the hour, got to get this quick one out of the way. We'll do so, and we'll talk more with you right where you've got it on the Wednesday edition of the Clarence Bug Show, here and only here on the Pelican. Stay close. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats, taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling Exiles from what you ask, exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Profita, he's Kevin Gallagher, and they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. 
We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. back to the midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Uh, this month, the month of September, is National Emergency Preparedness Month. And uh, how appropriate that in this particular month, we have already had uh, a catastrophic development here in the state of Louisiana with the advent of Hurricane Laura. It is also impactful in that the census is now uh, geared as it has always been toward helping locales deal with things of this nature. I was reached out to a few weeks back by a young lady that I had worked with before and she told me she's doing some work with the census communications team and very graciously asked if I had some time, if I could help to get the word out. And of course, I very readily said yes. So joining me for this segment is Marilyn Stevens, the Assistant Regional Census Manager. Marilyn, good morning and how are you today? Good morning, Clarence. Thank you for inviting me on the show. You're quite welcome. So with this month being National Earth, uh, Emergency Preparedness Month, how does filling out the census help in that regard, Marilyn? That's a superior question, and let me tell you why. Okay. One of the, some of the programs that are funded and in those uh, formulas are these population statistics. Mm -hmm. Number one, emergency preparedness emergency management emergency recovery uh, wow wow and just think you want your numbers to support your needs right therefore everyone must be counted you don't want to get short change mm -hmm. on emergency preparedness mm -hmm. and certainly as is the case with the folks in our part of the state that was so ravaged by laura you don't want to be shortchanged in recovery funds as well correct Absolutely. I mean, the, the question becomes, will our, will our numbers support our needs over the next 10 years? Mm -hmm. Will our numbers support our needs, mm -hmm. our needs for recovery? We're in the middle of a pandemic, so we're looking at a double recovery. Right. From a Hurricane Laura as well as from COVID-19. And just think, one thing we know about in this part of the country, hurricane season is not over. That's right. That's right. So for folks, Marilyn, who have never filled out a census form before, what's involved? What sort of questions can they expect to encounter? Right. There are only a few subjects on the census questionnaire. Mm -hmm. We ask your name. We ask how many people live in the house. We ask what their birth date is and their age as of April 1st, because that's the reference date. We ask if they're Spanish, Hispanic, or Latino. We ask what their racial identification is. And we, and we also ask what their relationship is to the person that's completing um, the form. Mm -hmm. And then we ask one economic question. Is this a home that's owned by someone in the home and they have a mortgage or it's owned without a mortgage or it's rented with rent or rented without rent? Mm -hmm. those, are just, those are the only things that we ask. Now, I'm sure, Marilyn, you are well aware of this, probably 
more so than maybe anybody watching right now. In this age of distrust, mistrust of government, some folks may be hesitant to take part in the census. What do you say to those people, Marilyn? Yes, that's the number one concern. Will my information I give to you be safe? Can it, use, can it be used against me? The answer is your information is safe. That's a yes. Can it be used against you? The answer is no. There are two laws that cover the responses you provide to us. One is Title 13, which says we can only publish information in tabulation or statistical form, and we cannot release anything that will identify you or your family with any information you provided to us. Mm -hmm. The law further states that no entity or agency can get your information. No law enforcement, that includes no police, no FBI, no CIA, uh, no ICE, no other immigration um, agency, no IRS, cannot be subpoenaed by the courts, cannot be gotten by the president, cannot be gotten by me. Under the law, all census employees have lifetime sworn status. Mm -hmm. So even when I retire from the bureau, I cannot tell anything that will identify Clarence and Clarence's uh, household with the information you gave to us. Mm -hmm. There is a five-year prison term and or a $250,000 fine wow. per infraction. Wow. So that's serious law. Yeah. And then the other law says that the census date is sealed for 72 years. So the last time we released anything that will identify a household or uh, a family with what they gave us was the 1940 census. We released that in 2012, mm -hmm. and in 2022, we will release the 1950 census. You've been uh, doing this for quite some time now, integrally involved in all of this. How disheartened or how encouraged are you with how Americans have responded to the census in your years of involvement, Marilyn? Well, you know, this is, you know, every census is different, and this one did not disappoint, I'm sure, I'm telling you. Uh, but this is the first time that we've had three options to self-respond. And online, by phone, and by mail. Mm -hmm. Remember in the old days of 2010, we sent the questionnaire to your door, you right. sent it back to us. So that was the only way you could self-respond before we started knocking on your door. Mm -hmm. But this time, you could go online at my2020census.gov, and in less than 10 minutes, you'll be done. Or you could call a toll-free number, 844-330-2020, and talk with the representative on the telephone. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're open from, eight, no, from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern every day. Mm -hmm. we or are, you could have mailed back the paper questionnaire. Okay, if you would give us that, that's my2020census.gov. Is that the web address? Yes. yes. And if you would give us that phone number again, please. 844-330-2020. Easy to remember, as in 2020. Yes. Now, we are also talking about, are we not... Uh, congressional representation. Uh, many people these days oftentimes complain about the responsiveness or the lack thereof of the federal government in meeting their needs uh, as congressional districts are concerned. It, it's my understanding, unless that's changed recently, that is also a strong contributing factor as to how these districts are divvied up as far as political power in our country is concerned? Yes. Um, the census is about representation and resources. So the primary reason we conduct the census is to determine how many seats in Congress that each state gets. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more seats the state gets, the bigger that state's voice and the wider the pipeline. Mm -hmm. On the resource side, we talked about emergency preparedness, emergency, right. emergency management, emergency recovery. Then there's health care, Medicaid, Medicare, children's health insurance programs, uh, rural hospitals, uh, community health centers and other health care services, and education, uh, early uh, Head Start and Head Start programs, Title I funds for our schools, 
as well as how the schools pro, uh, pro, uh, give the kids food mm -hmm. because of the uh, National Nutrition Program for students. So the schools need all those funds. Pell Grants for college students. Mm -hmm. um, good highways and good roadways. Great infrastructure. Um, then we look at social services such as SNAP and WIC, affordable housing such as Section 8, unemployment benefits. Um, services to seniors such as Meals on Wheels, services to veterans, energy assistance. The list goes on and on and on. And how can you be assured that every Louisiana gets its fair share? Participation in the system. Once a decade, we get to reset that dial. So again, that's my2020census.gov or on the phone at 844-330-2020. Fantastic. Marilyn Stevens, the Assistant Regional Census Manager, thank you so much for the time, and hopefully this time around we will have more people than ever to take part. We appreciate the time this morning, Marilyn. Thank you, Clarence, for being just a super, super 2020 Census partner and getting the word out about the importance of the census. You're quite welcome. Stay safe, Marilyn. You too. Thank you. It... Um, should become abundantly clear if you were listening just now that litany of things that Marilyn Stevens just talked about. In a state like ours where we are chronically at the top of so many bad lists, in a state where we chronically underperform as far as education, education resources, and probably more important, certainly a direct offshoot of that, earning potential. Louisiana <laughs> needs these things more than, and they will accept it in the spirit that is given, more than any other place maybe except Mississippi. We need these things. And you've heard me say, and it's, you know, it's a proven fact, the only way out of the problems that plague us in Louisiana are a healthier population and a better educated population. This is the way to be sure that we can achieve both of those. And listen, y'all, I get it. I understand. Clarence, I don't trust the government with my information. Well, the government pretty much has all your information anyway. And that that they don't have, most of y'all give them on Facebook anyway. But that's a different show for a different day. Just saying. Final break of hour one. We got to get her done. We'll come back and talk more with you right where you've got it. On the midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Here and only here on the Pelican. Stay close. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling
Bellows Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bellello's Furniture and Appliances. Your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man. 923 bugs. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvant. Call the bug man today. 923 bugs. off the set at the last second. That's, that's when you know you've arrived, right? <laughs> that's, that's when you know you've arrived, right? Clarence got white people working with it. <laughs> Still to come uh, in today's show, the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries announcing uh, late last week that they have secured uh, almost $15 million in funding to help uh, Louisiana fishermen adversely impacted by COVID-19. And uh, we will spend some time with Jason Dewey, a biology director with the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries Fisheries Division, uh, telling folks how they can uh, take advantage of, of some much needed help. I, um, man, in, in recent memory, your heart has to go out to Louisiana fishermen. I mean, if, if you think back to um, all the various hurricanes, you think back to the BP oil spill, uh, now COVID-19, uh, it's like those poor folks can't catch a break. And you and I have become so accustomed to, it's ingrained in us, it's a part of, of who we are that when it comes to seafood, we're spoiled. I mean, we think being able to get fresh Gulf shrimp just like that is the way it always has been and always will be. We think being able to get those mm -hmm, absolutely luscious Louisiana blue crab should be done just like that. It's the way it's always been. It's the way it'll always be. We think that mm, redfish, oh my God, red snapper, oh, grouper. I mean, it, it just, it, just go down the list. It, it's become second nature to us as Louisianians. But just imagine what our lives would be like if because of an oil spill, because of hurricanes, because of COVID-19, if our fishermen were no more. I mean, I, I, I've always said, if I ever took a job and had to leave my beloved Louisiana, at the top of the list of the things that I would miss most would be number one, the people, Number two, the food. And at the top of the food list would have to be Louisiana seafood. Uh, I have a very dear friend that works for GM up in Kokomo, Indiana. I guess uh, maybe a 45 minute hour drive away from Indianapolis. And every year for vacation, he will rent a van or, or a large SUV and he'll drive down to Louisiana. And before he leaves, he packs that puppy from the floor to the roof with ice chests. And he goes to Tony Seafood <laughs> and loads absolutely up. Needless to say, 
my buddy is uh, probably the most popular guy in all of Kokomo, <laughs> Indiana. I mean, people know every year Poulard is, is, is going back home. And his name's Poulard, last name. He is uh, Opelousa's boy by birth. So, you know, that, that explains all of that. But they all know every year, guaranteed minimum once a year, if not twice, he's going to drive to Louisiana and he's coming back with those delicacies that the folks up there in Indiana would absolutely kill for. I mean, he comes down, he doesn't get just the seafood. He stocks up on, on Tony Sacheries, on uh, Louisiana fish fry products, shameless plug for the good folks over there at that fine organization. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what I would do if we didn't have Louisiana seafood. I say that parenthetically. I know what I would do. I would do without. <laughs> That's what I would do. I would do without. But certainly my life would not be anywhere near as rich as it could be if that were to ever happen. Fortunately, um, and I have no numbers at this point how many of our beloved Louisiana fishermen have been impacted by COVID-19. But my gut tells me that $14.5 million uh, is probably going to be dispersed pretty quickly. So if you know of a Louisiana fisherman impacted by COVID-19, uh, we'll start at the top of next hour, Jason Dewey with the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries will give us the specifics on how they can tap into some uh, much needed money to help them weather this storm as well. Also, the baseball community, and for that matter, the Southern University baseball community is uh, in mourning this day after it was announced over the weekend the death of Lou Brock, former Southern University baseball legend and, of course, uh, St. Louis Cardinal and Chicago Cub legend. He uh, had been battling some health problems in recent memory, and I am somewhat embarrassed to say that I didn't know that in battling diabetes, Lou Brock had a leg amputated uh, some years ago. And it was just an irony of ironies, for lack of a better phrase, that a guy that earned a place in sports immortality using his legs uh, had that to happen, an amputation. It's um, a part of the circle of life. And it is just uh, one of those things. Ironically, and, and I've not been able to verify this just yet, um, but in looking at so many message boards and the like, after it was announced that Lou Brock has, had passed, that uh, Tom Seaver also died. And, and I seem to remember reading on, on one of the message boards, and again, I hadn't verified it, um, but I, I seem to remember someone posting, Tom Seaver was the first batter that Lou Brock faced in the majors and was the last batter that he faced in the majors. Uh, both of them, and again, hadn't verified it, wore the number 20, both of them died in the same week in 2020. Spooky, huh? Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, Roger Cador, coaching legend extraordinaire, particularly from Southern University, um, will join us to talk about some fond remembrances of Lou Brock and what he meant to the game of baseball. You know, it, um, we should all be so fortunate that when our time here has ended, 
I probably read from message boards um, over a thousand responses. The outpouring of, of love, the fond remembrances and the like of Lou Brock and, and his days as a player and after he retired. Of the over a thousand responses on various message boards, not a single one of them had anything bad to say. And you know, you could very well make the argument that, well, Clarence, you know what they say, you never speak evil of the dead. But there was a recurring theme from so many people how gracious Lou Brock was with his time. You know, a lot of folks after our, quote, heyday is over, if we are fortunate enough to achieve a, a certain level of fame, people want autographs. And the number of people that are in that particular vein, the number of people that after they pass, you see folks make comments like, yeah, so-and-so was a heck of a ball player, but he was a jerk as a person. The number of people that will comment, I'll never forget how ugly he treated my son who wanted nothing more than an, an, an autograph to honor that individual and their contributions to the sport. The number of people that will comment that, yeah, the guy possessed great speed, natural ability, but his people skills were sorely lacking. I know that, you know, that is probably just a part of the human experience. Somebody will pretty much always go out of their way to find something bad to say about someone immediately upon their passing. And I also know that just over a thousand responses is probably in no way, shape, or form indicative of what everybody is thinking. But Lou Brock was truly one of the good guys. He was um, a guy that was never selfish with his time, was a guy that loved his sport, and was a guy that always went out of his way to encourage other people. It's, um, again, a part of the natural cycle of life. We are born, we live, we die. But not all of us are so fortunate as to leave a legacy that people will cherish the likes of Lou Brock. Tell you what, we're going to get this break, top of the hour break, out of the way, and we will roll right along with the midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show, here and only here on the Pelican. Stay close. Sometimes life is wonderful, and sometimes it's not. Cherish the good, but always be prepared for life's challenges. At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private health care is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready. And health insurance is your financial safety net. Health insurance has never been so easy and affordable. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, call the number on the screen now and speak with a live health care consultant. Don't wait. Get the coverage you need now. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with The Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. 
Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the Exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We put the band back together, South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Cantea, your Italian dining will change forever. Welcome back as we start hour two of our midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show. If you were with us in the last uh, segment heading up to the top of the hour, I told you that um, if you're a native Louisianian like myself, your heart has to go out to one of the most valuable resources we have in our state, our fishermen here, particularly commercial fishermen. I mean, we think back to all the hurricanes that we've had. We think back to the annual dead zone that impacts the Gulf of Mexico. We think back to the BP oil spill and now COVID-19 and your heart just goes out to them because I mean, they are probably as Louisiana as anything you can name. And I'm talking jambalaya, Mardi Gras, sugar bowl, what have you. They, they are truly the essence of this great state. And recently, the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries announced um, that they now have some money available through the CARES Act, 14 point some odd million dollars to help the fishermen that have been adversely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Joining us to talk about this in this segment is Jason Duway, Biology Director with the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, Fisheries Division. Jason, good morning and how are you today, sir? Good morning, I'm doing just fine. Fantastic. So who's eligible to receive funds out of this 14 point what have you million dollars that's available? Okay, first off, you must be at least 18 years old mm -hmm. and a resident of Louisiana, or if you're a business, domiciled in Louisiana. Okay. Uh, you must have participated in the saltwater fishing industry in 2018 or 2019 mm -hmm. as either a commercial fisherman, owner of a commercial fishing vessel, seafood dock, seafood processor, mm -hmm. broker, or operated an aquaculture, uh, saltwater aquaculture uh, facility. Now, when, and a charter captain. when we are talking about uh, fisheries and fishermen and women in Louisiana, uh, there are so many businesses that are on the periphery of that. Let's talk, if we can, Jason, about what fishery related businesses are not eligible to participate. Okay, under, under this program currently, the uh, freshwater industry, such as catfish, crawfish, is not included. Uh, uh, also, bait facilities, uh, marinas, those kind of operations are not included in this round of payments. Okay, so how are these funds going to be disbursed, Jason? Okay. Um, Eligible applicants uh, will go to the website, and we have a list of criteria. Mm -hmm. um, like I said earlier, you must participate in the fishery in 2018 or 19, and you need to show 
an economic loss of at least 35 percent in 2020 during the months of March through uh, June. Okay. The application process itself, what does that entail, Jason? It is an online application process. Mm -hmm. If you go to www.wlf.louisiana.gov, there is a CARES Act assistance page, mm -hmm. and it has your application instructions as well as a, a link to the application. And those applications will open at 8 a.m. September 14th mm -hmm. and close at 11.59 p.m. on October 26th. Okay. If you would, give us that web address again and the opening and closing dates for eligibility, Jason. Yes, sir. The address is www.wlf.louisiana.gov. Mm -hmm. CARES Act Assistance page, and the application period will open at 8 a.m. September 14th and will remain open until 11.59 p.m. on October 26th. Sadly, aside from COVID-19, that is not the only um, big event that we've had that could have potentially impacted fishermen and fisheries in our state. In the event that fishermen were also impacted by Hurricane Laura, will that affect their potential CARES Act funding, Jason? Uh, it will not. Um, as if they can get an online application in, mm -hmm. they will. We can see about their qualification for CARES. Anything under Hurricane Laura would have to be a separate fisheries disaster. Okay. You know, and, and I'm sure you are probably well aware of this, but any time we have a disaster of whatever magnitude and it involves trying to get financial aid from any government entity and people hear the words filling out an online application, a lot of us immediately get cold chills, we break out in a damp sweat uh, because we dread having to go through a process of that nature. Does your agency offer any assistance to affected persons as far as filling out these applications are concerned? We have um, South Central Planning and Development Commission available mm -hmm. to assist individuals with filling out their applications. Mm -hmm. Their information is also available on our website mm -hmm. to where the South Central will help fishermen apply online via phone call or in person. You know, I, I look at the CARES Act and, and I think about the Louisiana Recovery Act and all these various uh, entities out there designed to help Louisianians and our fellow Americans navigate their way through the COVID-19 pandemic. All that being said, um, we're not talking about an especially huge amount of money, but at the same time, we also don't want our fishermen and fisherwomen, not to be sexist here, we don't want them to dilly-dally around with this application process for fear that the money may be snapped up too quickly, correct? That is correct. We've set aside enough funds to pay out qualified applicants, and if we don't receive uh, the amount of applicants we've uh, planned on, there mm -hmm. will be a second round of payments that would uh, kind of amend the original payment, add to it. So if you would, again, Jason, give us a quick overview of which folks are eligible to apply for and hopefully receive funds to help them get through this COVID-19 pandemic? Okay. Again, you must be at least 18 years old and a resident of Louisiana, mm -hmm. or if you're a business, you must be domiciled in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. If you have participated in the saltwater fishing industry in 2018 or 19 as a fisherman, 
an owner of a commercial fishing vessel, mm -hmm. a for hire charter captain, seafood dock, seafood processor, or seafood broker, or if you operated a marine aquaculture facility. And again, that web address is wlf.la.gov and look for the CARES. Uh, CARES Act assistance page? That is correct. Fantastic. Jason Duway, Biology Director with the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, Fisheries Department. Thank you so much for the time and, and more important, thank you and the good folks at Wildlife and Fisheries for doing what you can uh, to help, help keep this very valuable part of Louisiana alive and thriving. We appreciate that sincerely, Jason. Well, thank you, sir. Much appreciated. All right. Stay safe, my friend. Thank you. I, um, <laughs> in the last commercial break, was uh, patting my dear friend, Mighty, on the back, telling him, man, you own it, bro. You own it. You, you, you rocking the day. And, of course, as I was getting to the end of that uh, interview with Jason Duway, just now, happened to look at the clock <laughs> and once, and once, once again, he said it, but he didn't start it. White people, what you gonna do? I said it and forgot it. What you gonna do? Well, that, that is the literal definition of said it and forget it. <laughs> he said it and he forgot it. <laughs> but, but, but in all seriousness, folks, uh, many of us, like yours truly, hold our, our fishermen and women commercial here in Louisiana uh, in very high esteem and, and very high regard. So if you know of any that are struggling because of COVID-19, pass that information along to them. All of us um, have had to marshal our resources as we continue to kind of muddle our way through all of this. And uh, certainly, they deserve our support as much as we can give to them. We uh, need to get our first break of this hour out of the way. We will bang this out. But when we come back, we'll spend some time uh, with coaching legend extraordinaire Roger Peter Kador talking about uh, some fond remembrances of truly one of the good guys in all of sports. Uh, I understand. I get it. It was a different day back then. I get it. We didn't have to worry about politics in sports. We didn't have to worry about being preached to. We didn't have to worry about all sorts of things. But one of the things that I, I will always cherish about Lou Brock, aside from the childhood memories, is the fact that he was a ball player. But more than that, He's a good person, and God knows we need as many of those these days as we can get. First break of hour two, we get her done, and we roll on with the midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show right here on the Pelican. Stay close. For total home pest control, who are you gonna call? Call the bug man, 923-BUG. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvant. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. Nothing could ever bring me the feeling live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club a serene challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs for tee times and membership opportunities go to greystonecountryclub.com Bolello's furniture and appliances your dependable independent 
Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Exiles from what you ask? Exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Pafita. He's Kevin Gallagher. And they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. They said I could find you here. Why are you fishing? Our company's got to ship out two full color brochures and 20 color copies. You're killing me. It's done. Designed, printed, packaged, and shipped. How? You just got to know the right people. Baker Printing, the printing people. How come you get to fish in this private lake? Like I said, you just got to know the right people. You can know the right people too. <laughs> well, this time he started the clock, but he's late on the cue. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Hey, hey, at this rate he's batting 500. That'll get him in the Hall of Fame. Got one, missed the other. 500, that'll put you in the Hall of Fame, so I can't complain. The uh, entire Major League Baseball, and, and I would imagine sports world, uh, this day continues to mourn the loss of, of truly not just a great and gifted athlete, but a good guy. Um, again, I, I mentioned to you guys and girls that I must have read since news broke that Lou Brock had died. And going to various websites, national, local, international, reading message boards and, and people's comments about Lou. I must have read well over a thousand and not a single one had anything bad to say about Lou Brock. Uh, the, how he so freely gave of his time while playing and after retiring was truly a testament uh, to the kind of person that he was and how grateful he was to live in a country where he was able to do the things that he was able to do. For those of you that don't know, Lou Brock was a product of Southern University's legendary baseball program. So who better to share a few minutes with this day than legendary coach for the Southern University baseball program, our dear friend, Roger Cador. Coach, good morning, and how are you, my friend? Clarence, I'm doing good, and yourself? I am well, Coach. Thank you for asking. Lou Brock, was there ever a better ambassador for the game of baseball? It would be hard to find one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there was some that came close, but he's, he was as good as they come. Mm -hmm. He was pure in everything that he did. Yep, yep. What do you attribute Southern University's legendary baseball lineage to? How, how is it that a school in the grand scheme of things, as small as a Southern University, a school that was an HBCU, still is for that matter, was able to have such an impact on America's pastime? Well, they were fortunate. Uh, at the time Lou Brock came along in the 50s, black baseball was big. It was bigger than football and basketball yeah. to a large extent. Yeah. And it was huge. And I mean, you know, especially at the collegiate level. Mm -hmm. So when I think about his path to Southern was one 
that he literally left North Louisiana with everything he had on his back. Mm -hmm. Not knowing how he was going to get in school, not knowing anything other than he wanted a better life than he had in North Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. I mean, North uh, Louisiana. Right. And he made his way at the Southern, and for four or five days he didn't eat. And was so weak, by the time trial started, he fainted. Passed really? Out. Yes. Wow. And the coach felt sorry for him. And said, <laughs> get up, lad. Back like then they call you lad. Right. Get up, lad. Take a, a few swings. Well, back then you only get five swings. Okay. And out of the five, you hit two of them out the park. Wow. And the rest is history. Wow. He got that meal card. <laughs> and he <laughs> his tuition for to got in school. And then he ended up helping Southern win a national championship. The first one in baseball in the state of Louisiana in 59. Wow. There is, listening to you tell that story, there's a recurring theme there. You, you fall into that same category. When you enrolled at Southern, you didn't know if you were going to be able to get a scholarship, if you were going to be able to pay for school, what have you. But they found a way to make a way. Is that why that program has been so phenomenally successful and has the lineage that it has all these years? Oh, uh, yes. In my case, I was definitely searching. I, I was looking for a baseball scholarship, mm -hmm. but didn't get it. Mm -hmm. And because I played basketball, that was a decent basketball player, the athletic director at the time, Ulysses S. Jones, Mm -hmm. who is better known as Dean Jones, Right. said, Kato, I remember you. I saw you play against my son. Mm -hmm. You're a good player. I got a scholarship for you. Wow. And I came up there for a baseball scholarship, but right. ended up getting a basketball scholarship. So the point is, we both ended up to the university similar, but he got a baseball and I got a basketball. And I was only 30 miles from home. So I wasn't as far away right. from home as he was. Right. What do you think Lou Brock's legacy ultimately will be, Coach? Uh, well, you know, I really don't really know, but I, I feel that his legacy will, will be that he was a dream setter. He, as it relates to Major League Baseball, Right. he said, even though Top Top was before him with stolen bases, Mm -hmm. I think he had 930, and Lou Brock broke it with 900 and something. Mm -hmm. But uh, he uh, he was the guy that said revolutionized the stolen base in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. Remember, there wasn't a lot of people stealing bases back then. Right. And he was one of the guys when the car just traded for it, mm -hmm. they realized what they were getting, mm -hmm. a speedster who put his game together. Mm -hmm. And Clarence, let's go to put it to show you the significance of his stolen bases. Okay. Ricky Henderson ended up breaking his stolen base record. Right. But Lou Brock is still number two mm -hmm. on the list after all those years. Yeah. And at wow. 35 years old, at 35 years old, Clarence, Lou Brock ended up stealing 118 bases wow. at the age of 35. Wow. That ain't going to happen anymore. No. No. You mentioned, Coach, how big the game of baseball was in the African-American community when Lou Brock came through Southern and ended up going on to the major leagues. And I know that, like myself, our gravitating away from the game of baseball is uh, something that weighs on, on both our hearts. What are we missing in the community by not supporting the game of baseball the way we once did? Well, you're missing, you're leaving a lot of kids out because all kids ain't gonna be football and basketball players. Mm -hmm. And I think you put, the, put a bunch of pool, pool all those kids and throw them in there, a lot of them get hurt, they become discouraged, and they don't end up playing sports, and then they find other things that are not necessarily healthy for their 
mm-hmm. to get into. You got me? Right. So my thing is baseball was one of those sports that not the most talented player could be an intricate part of. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be the most talented to play baseball. Right. And I think that's the part we let, we missed out on. And also, Clarence, I want to go back and uh, give a little history mm-hmm. about historical about colleges baseball. You know, most of the players signed in the 50s and 60s came out of historical black schools. They, they came from college. They weren't signing them out of high school. Right. Remember, prior to that, when there was no draft, they didn't sign a lot of high school black players. Right. So they signed, the one got signed, were coming out of historical black colleges. Mm-hmm. When I went back and did the research, I was shocked that 80 to 90% of the players signed came from colleges. Wow. So when the people say that they were signing a quality person, they were signing a quality person who had some uh, uh, a mature issue. They have, they were mature. Right. And, uh, yeah, a lot more ready for the game of baseball. And probably more ready for the game of life because baseball has always been categorized as the thinking man's game, correct? You're correct on that. Mm-hmm. And most of them, keep in mind also, when they weren't playing in college, they were playing on those travel teams, which was still considered black baseball, but it wasn't a Negro League. Right. Because the Negro League was all through by the 50s. Right. But they were still playing on these black traveling teams, mm-hmm. which gave them a vast amount of experience. Mm-hmm. Because they had the older guys who played in the Negro League still playing. Right. And, of course, that helped them to develop uh, their people skills, relating to the fans, uh, understanding, developing an appreciation for people that bought tickets and made it possible for them to earn a living playing the sport that they loved. They really did. I mean, there were so many things that the, the Negro League did and the spinoff of it when it folded, even the spinoff still provided wonderful opportunities. Mm-hmm. I know I did as a 14 and 15 year old, I played with men 30 some years old. Wow. And the spin off of it was that I was gaining a vast amount of experience mm-hmm. because the older guys would tell you exactly what you did right and did wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, switch gears for a second, Coach. It was announced recently that with the acquisition of Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman, into the Southwestern Athletic Conference, speaking of of HBCUs, that we all knew there was going to have to be some realigning of the conferences. Uh, From a geographical standpoint, we knew that there was going to be, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, a shakeup in the West. And we found out recently that Alcorn State University uh, will now be added to the Western division of the conference along with Southern Grambling, Arkansas Pine Bluff, Texas Southern, Prairie View, uh, and now Alcorn State. Good move or bad move on the conference's part? Well, you say shake up the West. It's also shook up the East a little bit. Well, true. <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah. But it's a great move for the conference. Mm-hmm. I think they did it it was an unbiased decision. Right. I think they did it in the best interest of not just football, but they did it for the non-revenue sport. Right. Where they have to travel. Mm-hmm. And you understand you have to balance you have to balance your finances and thinking out. Mm-hmm. So I think when they looked at geographically, Alcorn made sense for all of its non revenue sports as well as football. Mm-hmm. And you know when when you look at um the natural rivalry that has been there over the years in football with Southern and Alcorn. Now that they are in the same division of the conference as the Jaguars are, that only seems to bode well for, as you mentioned, the non-revenue generating sports. Hopefully that rivalry from football will bleed over now uh, into all the other sports because we're all in the same division and we're all fighting to represent the West in championships against the East. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. 
And the thing I try to tell people when they start talking about, man, you 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 putting on the you putting the best football team in the three of the best football team in the league in the best conference. Well, you just added two really good football teams in right. the East. You can't keep them all over there, right? Because you would have had Jackson, Alcorn, one in Alabama school, and the two Florida schools, so it would have been unbalanced, right? So I think the conference balanced it out. And let's face it, Clarence. If you're going to win the championship, you're going to have to beat Alcorn anyway. Anyway. Get in the round. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, you have to beat them. Yeah. If you want to beat a man, you got to beat the man. And at, at the end of the day, you got to go through Alcorn one way or another. I, I'm going to ask you a hypothetical here. What do you think it would have been like had in your days of coaching – if you had to face Rat at all corn, <laughs> what, what, what would that have been like to be in the same division with Rat? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it would have been an experience. I think you said an experience. It would have been an experience, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> what a classic guy. Yeah. Uh, he was classic. I mean, he was different. Oh, yeah. He was different. Oh, yeah. It was very different, so it would have been an experience. I think that being the kind of guy I am, All right. I probably would have been choice some of it. <laughs> some of it I would have had an issue with, and the most of it I would have enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah, but but, yeah. but that's one of the things about Alcorn. Uh, over the years, they've been a school that has had individuals that, quote, were characters. I mean, you think back originally to to the Godfather, Marino Castle, <laughs> although he later ended up at Southern. Uh, and then you think about Rat. I mean, that that just seems like it's in their bloodline up there in Lorman, Mississippi, doesn't it? Well, you even though this guy wasn't coach at 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 Alcorn, the Gunslinger was an assistant yeah. coach at Alcorn. Archie Cooley. That's right. And, you know, one of the great all-time coaches, Dave Whitney, uh -huh. was the basketball coach over there. Yes, sir. And he did an outstanding job. Oh, without a doubt. Years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, Coach, I will never forget and I'll forever be grateful. As a young, then just starting out sports reporter back in the 80s, I could pick up the phone clear out of the blue. And I could call Dave Whitney. I could call Marino Chasm. I could call Rat. And they would always make time for me to give me an interview to help with the show and promote the game. Those were, those were truly some great gentlemen all across the board. I mean, W.C. Gordon at Jackson State was the same way. Eddie Robinson up at Grambling was the same way. Uh, those were truly some great folks back then, weren't they? And they understood the value of selling the program, yep. putting out the information. Yep. Because let's face it, the newspaper outside of Bad Rouge and maybe Jackson, newspapers wasn't writing about those guys. Mm -hmm. You got me? They didn't yeah. get the ink. You know, so whenever they could get it, they took advantage of it. Because yep. it was all about trying to promote their program, you know? Yep. And uh, the world and the sports community is much better off and a greater and stronger community because of folks like that and of course because of folks like yourself coach as always my friend great to hear your voice thank you so much for the time and and do all of baton rouge all of hbcu dom and all of baseball a huge favor and stay safe coach one more thing today we are celebrating the life and the contribution of Roberto Clemente. I almost cried today wow. because he did so much and he was such a great person. Amen. He gave his life up trying to help somebody in Nicaragua who had gone through an earthquake. And That's how he ended up not trying to save other lives. And, okay? and, and today is the anniversary of that tragic death? No, it's uh, for something he did in baseball. Okay. Uh, I, the tragic death happened in, in January. Yeah, okay. But, uh, you know, but it's, it's probably just celebrating when he got his 3,000 here. Right. On that day. Fantastic. A fountain of information as always. Coach, thank you, my friend. 
All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, we're a couple of minutes past on this break, but uh, if I'm not going to do it for Roger and for Lou Brock, who am I going to do it for? We'll bang this one out, get it out of the way, come on back and roll right on with hour two of the midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show here and only here on the Pelican. Stay close. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Cantea, your Italian dining will change forever. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Jaguar Nation, we need your help in masking up Louisiana. Masking up or slow the spread of COVID-19. During this time, we must continue to wear a mask. Wash your hands and practice social distancing. It's important that we continue to abide by the CDC's guidelines to stop the spread. Jaguar Nation, we challenge you to mask up. Go Jags! Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with the Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Welcome back to the midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show. I um, was marveling during the last commercial break uh, at Lou Brock's career. Those of you that have children that enjoy the game of baseball, particularly those that are just starting out, coming up, um, show some promise. Baseball is often categorized as the thinking man's game. And like it or not, y'all, some of y'all gonna get upset with me. That's okay. Ain't the first time, ain't gonna be the last time. Sorry, English teachers, I didn't give you all the heads up. But baseball fans are different than football fans. The sports are different, as, as you heard Coach Kador say. Football, particularly, is more predicated on brute strength, whereas baseball, aside from being the thinking man's game, is also more impacted by finesse. Lou Brock, over 19 seasons in the majors. <laughs> I know some folk that didn't last 19 years in their chosen profession, and it didn't involve physical exertion. His mastery 
of the base paths will forever be enshrined. 938 stolen bases out of 1,245 attempts. He is the National League's all-time stolen base leader, and his 118 steals in one season, 1974, is also the league's single season record. Only Ricky Henderson has more career steals in Major League history. And certainly, Lou Brock has to be credited for helping to revolutionize the game in that as a leadoff hitter, obviously, anybody knows anything about the game of baseball, your job is just to get on base. And those that come after you, their job is to bring you home. Well, whether it was by a walk or a single, once Lou got on, <laughs> I got this. Y'all, uh, number two, three, and four hitter, I don't care what y'all do, I got this. Coming <clears throat> I'm coming home <laughs> on my own. Now, y'all can help, you know, with a base hit or, or whatever if you want to, if you just feel like it. But if you don't, don't worry about it. I got this. Check these numbers out. This is not just stolen bases, okay? Over 11,240 plate appearances. He hit 293, 343, and 410. His 3,023 career hits ranks him 28th on the all-time list. Six-time All-Star won two World Series rings with the Cardinals. And his postseason, when people always talk about Peyton Manning and how he never delivered in the big one, except for one time. 92 World Series plate appearances. He hit in three seasons in the postseason. 391, 424, and, wait for it, 655. <laughs> you heard me right. 391, 424, and 655 while going 14 for 16 in stolen base attempts. Absolutely phenomenal. But even greater than that, he always had a smile. Even greater than that, he always had time for the fans. Even greater than that, he always had time to encourage kids. I know it's probably an overused phrase, but they truly don't make them like that anymore. Just saying. Tell you what, let me get my final break of today's show out of the way. We'll bang it out, come back, put a big old bow on this puppy, and wrap up the midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Stay close. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down 
Exiles from what you ask, exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Profita, he's Kevin Gallagher, and they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Cantea, your Italian dining will change forever. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Welcome back to the final segment of the midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show. You know, I um, would be remiss in my duties if before leaving air today I did not take the opportunity to address this horrific spike in deadly violence in Baton Rouge over the holiday weekend. It, um, any life lost to violent crime is tragic. But when you are talking about toddlers, babies, having their lives snuffed out because some piece of you fill in the blank here, decided to do a drive-by shooting is for a guy who makes his living with words it, it's hard to come up with adequate words to describe what that is our leadership black folks is failing us sort our leadership is doing an absolutely horrendous job of representing us and leading us. Just out of curiosity, after this darling child had her life snuffed out this weekend, just out of curiosity, I went to the website's Facebook pages of the, quote, leadership in the black community. And not a word was mentioned. Now, had this darling child been killed by the police, it would have been plastered everywhere. I went to the website of the NAACP, not a peep. I went to the website for Black Lives Matter Baton Rouge, not a peep. And I don't know how many of you saw the news story where our district attorney, Hilla Moore, was interviewed. And he talked about, in his 44 years in law enforcement in the capital city, how this particular death has left him scarred. 
keep in mind that Hillamore as district attorney and his years in law enforcement has seen things that many of us cannot begin to fathom having to see. But he talked about watching the children running behind the coroner's van, begging them not to take this darling child away. It crushed my spirit. And I'm going to call out the black clergy in my city and my state. Y'all are failing us. I'm going to call out the politicians, particularly the Democrats, because after all, black folk in this city and this state pretty much vote lockstep Democrats. Y'all are failing us miserably. Maybe it's due in large part to they don't want to say the wrong thing the wrong way at the wrong time and then black folk going to play the race card on. Maybe it's that. But if they cared about you as much as as they claim to. Politicians, clergy, you would be screaming to the highest hills, the lowest valleys, and all points in between. When a darling child, a baby, has their life snuffed out in a drive-by. What's to say the cure for cancer wasn't killed in that child's demise? What's to say desalinating the world's oceans to provide clear, clean drinking water at virtually no cost, who's to say that child was not going to be responsible for that? And yet, we ain't marching, we ain't rioting, we ain't protesting. What's up with that? Who, who do we have, Mark? Mark, my friend in Denham, how are you, my friend? I only got a couple of minutes left. Talk to me, Mark. A chief of police that I worked for many, many years ago made this statement when he was interviewed about the high homicide rate during his term as chief of police. Okay. His comment was this, very simple. I can only prevent a homicide when I know who's going to do what, when, and where. And that's all I can do. No matter where I put my men, they know when they can escape. They know their own plan to do it. That's the only two things they're concerned about, killing and escape. God bless you, my friend. Mark, thank you, sir. I'm begging, y'all. I am begging. If there's anybody out there with any information that can bring this piece of you-know-what to justice, 344-STOP, call. If you are afraid, Clarence, you got to understand many people in neighborhoods like this are besieged by violence. They live in fear. They're afraid. Well, I propose this to you. If it were your three-year-old, if it was your mother, if it was your loved one and someone had information that could help get this person off of our streets and out of your community wouldn't you want someone to do the right thing 
see, what we got to understand, black folk, is criminals thrive on the indulgence of society. If they thought for one minute, every single person in my neighborhood was going to raise holy hell, every single person in my neighborhood couldn't get their cell phone out fast enough to call the police and get my sorry behind arrested, a lot of this would fix itself. But we're too busy pointing the finger of blame everywhere else. We're too busy listening to these do-nothing, ain't worth a damn politicians who try to convince you that you're a victim. When do we get sick and tired of being sick and tired? These are our babies for God's sake. And the next time, if you don't do the right thing this time, the next time it might be your child. Then you're going to be on the news Nail, uh, uh, weeping and nailing and gnashing of teeth. Somebody call and do the right thing. It's not exclusive. We all have to do the right thing. Unless and until, y'all, we do it. Nothing's going to change. I don't know about you. But I have long since been sick and tired of watching the news, seeing black mothers grieving over the loss of their children. I guess enough of us ain't sick and tired of being sick and tired. Some of y'all ain't gonna get that till later. That's okay, long as you get it. This day, more than ever. You're right, America, we're not perfect. But doggone it, for my money, it's the best there is. And God knows there's no place else on his green earth that I'd rather be. Speaking of the good Lord, you realize he loves you. And I hope you know that I do too. Then again, <laughs> ain't a doggone thing you can do about either one. Take care of yourselves and each other. See you Monday. God bless.